Hi, my name is Dora and I am a grade eight student currently going to school at HDSV Virtual Elementary West. Hi, my name is Sienna and I'm also a grade eight student at the same school. Thank so, you for taking your time to listen to our presentation. And making this fair possible. Our project is reducing tolerance to hydromorphone by inhibiting the release of cytokines. The question we were trying to answer was, how might tolerance to hydromorphone be reduced? So the aim of this project is to find a method that can counter the consequences of tolerance while maintaining the energetic effects of hydromorphone. We did this by looking at the involvement of cytokines in the tolerance to hydromorphone and then comparing different cytokine inhibitors to find the best one. Tolerance is a side effect that can occur with almost any type of medicine, and that includes hydromorphone. It is when a person no longer responds to a painkiller, the same as when they first did, because the opioid receptors have become less responsive to stimulations from the drug. In medical care, hydromorphone is mostly used to help patients reduce their pain. However, the occurrence of tolerance greatly limits the efficacy of the drug. It complicates the recovery process for patients because many of them suffer from withdrawals and tolerance itself has the potential to lead to addiction and dependence when doses have to be constantly escalated. Most of the time, tolerance is dealt with by slowly increasing the dosages for the patient. However, since tolerance has many side effects, the most effective solution is preventing tolerance as a whole. So we picked our topic because we had seen people around us talking about why we shouldn't take painkillers unless we actually, actually need them because we may become tolerant to the painkillers and then the painkillers wouldn't work as well when we actually need to have them. So we were interested in why this was the case. Tolerance isn't well studied, which makes our study more valuable. And throughout our research project, we realized more and more how people don't know anything about this topic because even us, we couldn't find any info on lots of different connections and every report had a different hypothesis. So our hypothesis was that if another drug that can inhibit the release of cytokines is consumed with hydromorphone, then the tolerance will be reduced while maintaining the analgesic effects because the tolerance from the inflammation caused by the cytokines. When the drug is consumed, the body no longer feels pain and it messes with the normal functions of it originally and it then acts as if a pathogen has entered. Then the immune system cells will release a protein known as cytokines. They do this to protect themselves against viruses and cytokines will release an inflammation, which is the root of tolerance. When something can either block out cytokines or prevent them from releasing, then it will no longer cause inflammation to occur. So in order to test our hypothesis, we had to first look at past studies. We emailed some universities and experts about this topic, but none of them actually had anything that directly connected to ours. We still had some resources to help us in a way, but we had to mostly depend on the internet for our study. So more specifically in our past studies, we looked at company monographs for hydromorphone, as well as different ways tolerance is caused, not necessarily in hydromorphone, but also with opioids in general. But then we encountered a problem when we realized that there were still so many questions that were left unanswered or simply some holes that there were no information to fill up. So for example, there was no explicit connection between hydromorphone and cytokines. We knew there was something between them, but no one had done any research on it. So we had to find a different way to solve it. So yeah, to solve the problem, we had to do more research to answer those questions. So we found quite a bit of information on how morphine and cytokines interact. We knew that if we drew the connection between morphine and hydromorphone, right, so we can do that by looking at their differences and similarities when consuming during metabolism, then we would know how hydromorphone and cytokines interact. And therefore we would know how cytokines cause tolerance to hydromorphone. We also found a study that stated that scientists also assume that all opioids interact with the same part of the brain, which means that since morphine is an opioid and hydromorphone is one as well, they should both interact with the same parts of the brain, which means that they all interact with cytokines. 
When we had an understanding of the causes of tolerance to hydromorphone, we looked for possible inhibitors of pro-inflammatory cytokines. The inhibitors will either lower the synthesis of cytokines, lower their concentration in free form, make the interaction with specific receptors harder, or get in the way of signaling with cytokines receptors. So out of all the ways that were found, we only kept four that seemed the most effective, and it was baclomesacin, tomatoes, which contained lysopene, infliximab, and lenalidomide. So they were also ranked in that order from best to worst, and I'll be explaining why in a second. So our conclusion then, since it was discovered there were inhibitors that can successfully reduce inflammation by targeting cytokines, then it can be shown that the hypothesis was correct. Since it was found and analyzed, that the relationship between cytokines and hydromorphone is the same with cytokines in any other opioid, then it can be concluded that the hypothesis was right. So we ranked them in the order that we did because both infliximab and lenalidomide have a negative interaction with hydromorphone. The interaction between lenalidomide and hydromorphone was more deadly, which is why it was placed last. And beclomethacin is first because it's more effective than tomatoes, even though it has more side effects. And after some weighing, we decided to rank it the way we did. So looking back, we think that the project could be improved by looking at a wider variety of ways to combat tolerance, which includes looking at receptors in the different cells in the brain, but we didn't do that, which made the, our report on our project more limiting than it had to be. Also, not as much research had been done about this topic, which made it hard to make connections and conclusions. If this project was done again, then we would be more organized since we researched lots of things and abandoned it since it didn't connect well. And it, it's not a good problem to have, obviously, because some of our time was wasted. And the next step of this project would be looking at the chemical changes that would reduce tolerance in hydromorphone. So this project is really important because it shines light on a new approach. And in science, innovation is important, new ideas are important, and we feel as if this is really understudied. And if it was better researched, then it could perhaps bring a solution to problems that people have been facing for decades. So I think we both enjoyed the project a lot. It was a really fun learning experience to be able to challenge ourselves with a topic that we would have not learned in school yet. I'm also really thankful that we got support from all of our teachers and from a few universities. It was good being able to learn a lot of information by talking with them. Even though the studies didn't help as much as we would like, it was a good experience to be able to chat with some experts. That concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening and thank you for your time.